So we get to finally talk about one of the more interesting devices of this year, which is the iPhone 12. Now this device was just a brand new device and Apple is still selling it, but this was the flagship of the base model iPhone 12, which came out in 2020. And these are great iPhones, I think, for what they brought and everything like that. But my only issue with the iPhone 12 series right now is the massive amount of complaints people are having with the battery degradation. So I've talked about this in a ton of different videos, and even with this one going into 2022, this still seems to be a pretty big issue that many people were having, including myself. Typically when there's a big issue, I sometimes experience it, sometimes I don't. In this specific case, I actually experienced it with my iPhone 12 Pro, but people have been also complaining about it with the iPhone 12 series of devices as well. Now this device is still being sold brand new by Apple for $699 which I think is a pretty decent price tag, but I would just recommend going up to the iPhone 13s as of that point, just because there's only like a $50 difference between the 128 gigabyte iPhone 12 and the iPhone 13. So it just kind of makes sense to go up to the iPhone 13 as of that point. Now on the front of the iPhone 12, we still have that 6.1 inch Super Retina XDR OLED panel. It still looks great. It doesn't look bad. And like I mentioned before, I'm a fan of the way this phone looks. It doesn't have a ProMotion display or anything, but it's still a pretty good panel and I think it's totally okay. You have the notch up top, no fingerprint sensor or anything, but it's still a very good looking panel. You have a lightning port at the bottom of this phone, which is great. And you have the flat side design, which kind of future proofs this phone because future versions of this iPhone are probably pretty much going to have flat sides as well. And when I hold a flat sided iPhone, there are some pros and cons with it, but it is a different design than what we're used to. So like I mentioned, going forward, this type of design is the one we're probably going to end up using and I'm a fan of it for sure. Now we do have the glass back, which is great. You have wireless charging on this phone. You have IP certification. The feeling of this phone in the hand feels extremely premium. So it doesn't feel like a cheap phone either. And at the end of the day, this is still a very good feeling and very good performing phone just in terms of the way it looks and everything like that. Now we can go ahead and hit on the camera setup on this phone as well. It has a dual camera setup on the back. So it has a 12 megapixel wide angle lens, then a 12 megapixel ultra wide sensor, but it also has a 12 megapixel wide angle lens on the front, which is great. Now both the back and the front cameras can do 4K at 60, which is really cool. So you have the option of going up to 4K at 60 if you want to, and that's still more than enough. That's great for having that on the front and the back of this iPhone. Having 8K and everything is great, but in real world use, you're probably not going to use that often, but having 4K at 60 is really important in my opinion. Now with the camera set up on the back, what I will tell you is, is in my opinion, this is still a very good camera. You know, I really don't think the newer iPhones like the iPhone 13s are really that much better. I do think with cinematic mode, that is pretty much the main feature that I like. And even though the iPhone 12 is almost two years old, I guess in like seven, eight months, it's going to be two years old. This isn't a bad camera. This is still a really good camera in this day and age. If I'm comparing an iPhone 12 to an iPhone 13, they are almost exactly the same. I couldn't tell that big of a difference. However, if I'm comparing an iPhone 13 to like a Galaxy S21 Ultra, there are massive differences for sure. So it really depends on which way you look at it. In my opinion, for things that I do typically on a day-to-day -day basis, things like Snapchat, TikTok, different things like that, this camera is great for those things. And I think a majority of you may also fall into that category. If you're trying to film super high-end videos and different things like that, this camera will probably be good too. In my opinion, both the front and the back camera of this thing are very good still, and I have very few complaints in that area for this specific device. Now, another big thing to keep in mind about this phone is the fact that Apple is still selling it brand new. This makes it very easy to pick up. And because of that, I really do think the iPhone 12 is going to be getting many more years of software support. Obviously, that's a guarantee, but I think it's going to go in line with something like an iPhone 6S, where that phone just kept getting software support. I have a feeling the iPhone 11 and iPhone 12 series are going to fall in suit something like that too. Maybe Apple will extend their software support longer than what we are used to, which is even longer than that, which is crazy. So I think something like that could happen. I think with the iPhone 12 specifically, this phone is going to be getting iOS 16, 17, 18, 19 maybe even iOS 20, who knows. It's going to be lasting for a very long amount of time. So if you pick up this phone today or a month from now or a year from now or even two years from now, you're still going to be getting a supported phone, which is always good to see. So in terms of software, that covers it up there. Now hitting on the performance side of things, this device has that Apple A14 Bionic chip inside of it with four gigabytes of RAM. Now here's the thing about this phone that I've kind of mentioned before here and there. This performance is still very good. I have had a very few complaints about this type of phone. And like I mentioned, when you have a phone like this, that's still extremely brand new, you're really not going to be running into too many issues. And that's the thing. And with something like an iPhone 13, 
Yes, it's a faster phone, but it's really not that much faster than you would expect. From my experience, whenever I did anything with my iPhone 12, and even when I compared it to every single one of my iPhone 13s, very little differences, even in terms of the RAM management. In fact, I found something really interesting in my speed test I did just a couple of days ago or a week ago. The iPhone 13 RAM management isn't really even as good as the iPhone 12's RAM management, which doesn't really make too much sense to me. So the fact that we already have that type of difference from the iPhone 12 and the 13, there's just so much similarity between them. Every single thing about the performance of the iPhone 12 is still very good, even when you compare it to the 13 Pros and 13 Pro Maxes. The one thing about this phone though, it doesn't have a 120 hertz panel like we have on the 13 Pros, so it doesn't appear as smooth as something like that, but it's still a very smooth phone. It's still very smooth in terms of everything you're going to do at it. Maybe the only problem here is sometimes it doesn't load apps as fast as something like an iPhone 13, but once the applications are loaded, it's going to be perfectly fine. If you're planning on doing heavy intensive gaming or anything like that, this phone is going to be able to handle it perfectly. And I have a third channel dedicated now to just gaming content, and this includes mobile gaming and I'm going to be you know hitting on a lot of the iPhone 12 gaming and PUBG and all this stuff so you can go and watch that channel if you want to to get a little bit more idea what's going on but pretty much the iPhone 12's performance is still very good and I have very few complaints about this phone as well. Now ending it off with the battery life this thing had a 2815 million power battery. Now the battery life wasn't even as good as the iPhone 11 and this is probably the one area of this phone that I'm not a crazy big fan of and this mostly has to do with this device's battery degradation. So my iPhone 12 12 Pro, so not the 12, but the 12 Pro went from, you know, 100% battery health to about 87% in about a year, which is crazy. My iPhone 11 Pro before that was still at like 90 something percent. The iPhone before that was also around that same time or same health too. So it really makes no sense to me why these iPhones are going down in battery health that much. And that's really the only reason I wouldn't recommend buying an iPhone 12 because Apple needs to fix this problem. I mean, it's very weird. You do have MagSafe wireless charging, which I think caused a lot of that degradation, but ultimately the battery life is very average for what you're getting. I think it's pretty much, you know, middle of the road. It's not great. It's not bad. It's just the iPhone 12's battery life. Now to kind of sum up this video, the iPhone 12 is one of the best phones that Apple made in 2020 because it was one of the only phones Apple made in 2020. I think the display is awesome. I think the build quality is really good. And I think the cameras are really, really good on this phone too still. It's approaching two years old, you know, later this year, which is crazy. But I think this phone is worth it in some areas. But I do think if you have the money, if you're going to buy a brand new iPhone 12, you might as well go for an iPhone 13. The iPhone 13 is a much better phone than the iPhone 12s. You're getting much better battery life and it's just a better phone in every single area. I do appreciate the iPhone 12. I like the fact that it brought that, you know, flat sided body to it now. I like the, you know, squared off design a little bit. I appreciate the upgrade of performance and different things like that, but it really caused me some issues with my battery degradation, specifically for my 12 Pro. But I've also seen the same exact complaints for other iPhones in that 12 series, including the 12, which is this one, the 12 mini, and the iPhone 12 Pro Max. So it really just depends on you. If you need to go buy a brand new phone, then I guess you can't go wrong with an iPhone 12. But do keep in mind, something like an iPhone 13 is right around the corner. It's almost as easy to pick up as the iPhone 12. And I'd probably recommend buying that phone over the iPhone 12 for sure. So in terms of that, that pretty much covers it up. If you guys have any other questions or anything like that, let me know in the comment section below. Hit the like button, that me so much, but definitely hit that subscribe button. More importantly than everything else, I love every single one of you guys. Hopefully I'll catch you guys in the next video. Peace out till then.